Hi guys, in this tutorial we're building a pure JavaFX game, um, Space Invaders. And by pure I mean that we're not going to use any of the external libraries that are available. And the goal of this tutorial, um, as with previous tutorials, is to make a very simple foundation, potentially crude foundation, but some something that is simple to read and write which you can use as a foundation to build an actual clone of Space Invaders. All right, so I'm just going to quickly get rid of the boilerplate stuff out of the way. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why I prefer using an engine, um, because you spend some time on boilerplate. Which is essentially exactly the same code for most part. Right, so first thing we're going to do is create an application that runs. Right. In software development, you run, get something running first and then ask questions. Right, we don't have anything yet. Uh, let's go with, we need a representation of a game object. Let's call it, let's call it Sprite. And we're going to use rectangle because rectangles are simple and easy to work with. We need a type. We also need to know if they're dead or alive. Dead or alive, they're coming with us, apparently. Uh, sprite. Let's do X, let's do Y. We need width and height. Uh, what else? We need type. And no, we know they're um, not dead when they're spawned. We need color. Super um, X, no, it's width and height and color. And we're also going to set the type to this. And we're going to translate by X and translate by Y. Translate means move in most graphics API. We also want to be able to move a sprite. Let's do five. Move up is minus because you might remember the y axis, the positive y goes down, which means plus me means down. All right, so the movements are done. Uh, let's get the player on the screen. Sprite player new, nope, new sprite. X and Y, uh, 300, 750 width and height. Let's do this and type player, color, let's go with blue. And then we can add something to the screen like this. All right, so player is on the screen. Now we want to be able to move the player. Space for shoot. So player move left, player move right, and we want to be able to shoot. Space shoot. Let's do the moment and see. Yep, 
It's quite jittery at the moment because I'm capturing and handling input at the same time. What you want to do is create some billions, something that says like move left is captured, and then in the main update loop actually handle the movement. So basically call this. And and that will create a much smoother movement. So this is our timer, aka main loop. What else do we need? Uh, we need some enemies. I'm going to call the function next level so that when you want to, when you destroy all of your enemies, you can create this, you can call this function again, which will create more enemies. Let's do five enemies. Sprite S, new sprite. X and Y is going to be something like this plus this or 90. Oh, let's do 100. Y, let's put them all at the same Y value. Width and height, let's make them smaller than the player and type enemy color. Let's go for red. The shit goes five enemies. And we want to be able to shoot. Uh, which is going to create a bullet. X and Y, uh, X and Y come from the person who shot the bullet, which means we need to pass the person who shot the bullet. Get translate X. Uh, let's offset it by, so the player is 40 pixels wide. Let's do half of that. Translate Y, um, width and height, so bullets are vertical in this game. So let's go for this, and the type is bullet. And the color is black. So this will be added on the screen, which means we need to be able to iterate over all the bullets and yeah, we need to pass who shot the bullet. Iterate over all the bullets and then move them. But enemies can also shoot the bullets, which means, which means we need to somehow assign different types because bo different bullets are going to have different types, right? Let's go with this. So this will give us player bullet if the player shot the bullet and enemy bullet if the bullet was shot uh, by the enemy. So now let's go through all children for each. No, I don't want node, I want sprites. Fine, I'm going to create a helper function then. Um, list of sprite. Because root get, get children returns nodes, and I want to be able to access sprites directly because they are sprites anyway. So we're going to stream map um, and to a sprite collect to list. I can do now something like that. For each sprite, check the type of the sprite. So this is our main logic essentially. If the type is enemy bullet, move down. Also check for collision, for collision between player. Get layout, uh, get bounds, no, it's get bounds and parent. Intersects, player, get bounds, parent. So that says if enemy bullet is colliding with player, player dead, bullet dead. Hmm. 
player goes, uh, player bullets move up. And here we need to check against each enemy. Sprites, stream filter, s, no, call it e, e type equals enemy. For each enemy, if s get bound and parent intersects with enemy parent, uh, bounds and parent, then enemy is dead. And the bullet is dead also. Okay, so we've done the logic for bullets and we need some kind of AI. Let's go for um, shoot the bullet every something seconds. We need time. Time is increased by weird. Um, 16 milliseconds because that's how frequently the updates running and If time is greater than two seconds and if the check passes 30% chance then shoot And we need to make sure to clean up stuff Remove if. Because if they're dead, we need to remove them from the screen. Okay, I think we're done here. For the most part, anyway. Let's see. So. Whoa, that's... I did not reset the counter. If t is greater than 2, t is 0. So, I can shoot. They can shoot. My bullets hit them, they die. Their bullets hit me, I die. Yep, that's fine. Okay, I think that's about it. So just under 170 lines. That's fine for a demo. So in this tutorial, we've covered uh, how to make a simple foundation for a Space Invaders game. Admittedly crude foundation. Um, for example, these things should really go. You need to capture a billion um, into billions. So called move left, move right, shoot. And then in these, uh, in this update, if move right, then move right. In which case you'll get smoother movement. Also, you can replace this by passing a path to an image or an image itself. Extend image view instead, and then you'll get a, a real nice kind of game with actual images rather than software generated shapes. And also, once all the enemies are dead, you would want to call next level. Perhaps have different levels, different layouts for the enemies. And then you'll be limited just by your imagination because the foundation should now be here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and um, the link to the source code will be in the description. Thanks for watching.